And so David is not only guilty of an affair or adultery, he's also guilty of murder. Bathsheba mourns the loss of her husband. After she, she mourns, David brings her to the castle. He marries her. Another attempt to try to cover up this whole, sh this whole situation of, his, of her pregnancy. And so she then gives birth to the baby. The baby dies. And so David, for a span of a year, the pregnancy, the birth, afterwards, he doesn't repent of his sin. And he's bound up with this all kind of emotional, ethical, moral, turpitude, and just junk. And God sends a prophet to talk to David and said, David, get it right. Out of David getting it right comes this psalm. I want you to see how David, this scandal was international, shipwrecked him big time. I want you to see the bigness of his heart, though, towards God. Look before verse 1. There's this little note that's written there in most Bibles. It directs us to who David gave this song to. It says, for the director of music, a psalm of David. When the people, oh, I'm sorry, when the prophet Nathan came to him after David had committed adultery with Bathsheba. What did David do? David takes the song that he wrote in his private time to get healed and to get forgiveness from God and he delivers it to the director of music so that the national choir can sing it so all of Israel may know how to repent and get things right with God. Seldom do I meet someone that knows how to get things right with God when things have fallen apart. And I want you to see this roadmap because David, this roadmap was so brilliantly written that God in his infinite wisdom allowed it to be stayed or memorialized in sacred scripture that today, thousands of years later, we get this wonderful privilege of seeing how to repent and how to make things right or how to break free when we're caught in the clutches of sin.